Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Um, do you know what today is? Today is Saturday. Yeah, it's Q&A Saturday. That's right. And what are we queuing and aing today? Well, technically we're covering chapters 26 through 30 of Jeremiah. Or technically, Technically. Though. That's the section that we just finished. Sure, sure. That's not... Fully, we're, we're talking about an offshoot of that, like something that was mentioned in, in my notes Okay. that I was curious about and wanted to like learn more about. Got it. Got so it. it's not. It's not that. It's not but that. But that's the stuff we're covering sort of It's a question in a I had way. in my notes about those chapters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. You ready to get into this? I am. Let's do this. Okie dokie. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you today about some tablets. Tablets, huh? Yeah. Like iPads and Samsung it, tablets? Totally, okay. totally what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so do you remember in uh, chapter 29 when uh -huh. that was about Jeremiah writing some letters, right? Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. He wrote letters to them over there in Babylon that had been taken away. Yeah. And then he wrote some letters to um, the people at home being like, I You're know fucked. about what you said. Yeah. Yeah. So I wondered at the time, like, he. so he just wrote a letter, huh? He just wrote letters. Right, right. And we kind of, like, glossed over it, like, oh, okay, I guess he wrote letters. Yeah. But here's the thing. Diplomatic correspondence between overlords and vassals, that was totally common back then in the second millennium BC. Okay. They just sent letters to each other. Okay. Like, whatever. Um. Another example would be letters written from Palestine to the Pharaoh. Like, we found some of those apparently, and just what? That's just what they did. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So, they did that. Okay? They wrote letters. They wrote letters. Got it. Okay? Yeah. And moreover, the letters that he wrote, um, remember at the time we were like, oh, I wonder if there were naysayers over in Babylon too. Like, if there were false prophets there amongst the people that had yeah. been kidnapped and led away? Right. There were. Okay. There totally were. Got it. So okay. not everybody in Babylon was good. Right. Like, okay. not all the best and brightest. Okay. Also, some of the scummiest and most liar-faced. Right. Okay? Yeah. So that was a lie in the Bible. Got just it. Just so you know. Okay. Yeah. There were false prophets there. So that's what he was being like. I know there's some folks over there telling you that y'all about to come home tomorrow or whatever, but they're lying and y'all there for a lifetime. Sorry. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So here's the thing. There was a lot of, like, unrest and stuff going on around that time. Yeah. And we had talked about how the various little nations, how they felt kind of like, maybe now's the time to attack Babylon. Right, Because we right. see cracks in the facade, right? Sure. And there was a whole, they had a discussion. That's when, mm -hmm. uh, when Isaiah stopped him outside of the palace Jeremiah. or whatever. Or Jeremiah. Yeah. Jesus. Um, <laughs> uh, when he stopped him outside, that, that's what they had come to talk to the, the king about. Yeah. Or whatever. They were trying to figure out a way to maybe... Stop Babylon. To, to plot against Babylon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, there was definitely unrest okay. in, in the area at the time. Yeah. Okay. And both Jewish prophets in Jerusalem and Babylon, as I said, they were predicting the end of the ex exile soon. And they sure. were like, it's bound to happen every any day now. Yeah. Because they all knew that shit was on shaky ground. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there is a hint of the chaos that was happening in what's called the Babylonian Chronicles. And my ears perked up and I was like, I'm sorry, excuse me, what? <laughs> Babylonian Chronicles sounds like a fucking comic book series. <laughs> I need to read that. Right. So, um, what are the Babylonian Chronicles I'm, was my question. They, chrono they chronicle, chronicle Babel. the Babel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're a collection of around 45 clay tablets. So, not 
Oh, they didn't, they didn't use like papyrus or anything like that. They, they were never... clay tab tablets written in cuneiform. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. And I was like, I must know about these. I, I want to know everything about them. What are they? Where are they? Yeah. What What is going on with them, guys? Sure. Sure. Okay. The Chronicles provide a large portion of what we know today of current Babylonian history. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And they are considered the most reliable of ancient official records, hmm. which I just find astounding. Yeah. And these texts are largely about the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which are of great interest, of course, to biblical scholars. Right. For its historical involvement with the kingdom of Judah. Got it. So... It's this outside source that kind of validates some, some of, the, of the history that yeah. was happening. Sure. The the politics, obviously, not the religious y prophet shit. Right. You right. know? Just yeah. the the normal stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, they were composed by Babylonian astronomers known as Chaldeans. Oh. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't oh. know that. That's they, what the Chaldeans were. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were they were a tribe outside of Babylon that got sucked into Babylon, but they were um, astrologers. I see. So, or, or astronomers, sorry. Right. And so um, they were very wise people okay. that Babylon just kind of sucked into their group. Yeah, they were like, you're with us now. Got it. They were like, mm, okay, because there weren't a lot of them and, you know. Yeah. Uh, and as we saw, the people that Babylon kind of sucked into their hold, mm -hmm. they were granted a fair amount of freedom. I mean, let's talk about how um, Jeremiah is telling the Babylonian exiled people, go ahead and take land, farm land there, right, marry, right. have children. Yeah, like, it sounds like, I mean, kind of, even based on the Bible, it sounded like they were collecting like the best and brightest, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So. And so not only were they collecting the best and brightest for their own um, communities, right. they were also granting those people a large amount of freedom within their capture. Right. So they were like, well, the bad news is you have to stay here forever. The good news okay. is we don't suck completely. And all, all of your peers are here and, you know, it's kind of cool. Right. So it would be kind of like if Google went around and like kidnapped scientists and <laughs> and um like IT people and just like all the smarty smarts yeah. and then locked them into the building but paid them really well and like and, yeah. gave them lots of food that they wanted and... which I kind of hear is how Google is. Right. <laughs> like, so imagine that Babylon is kind of Google. Okay. okay? Right. Like the bad news is you work 24-7 now, and you're always on call. But the good news is... You got lots of benefits and... Lots know. and lots of perks, and you're surrounded by bright people. Sure. You know? I mean, that 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 means it didn't all suck. Which, right. Which, you know, is kind of important, I think. Yeah. Because when you think about being kidnapped, you and we were led to believe kind of that they were led away into slavery and right. exile, right? right? Like, those are heavy words, right? And yeah. they just kind of weren't. Got it. So that's kind of important. To, it, it's still a cage, but it's definitely a gilded cage. I'm sure they probably reserved the right to enslave certain people. I'm sure they did. Yeah, and I'm sure, lower, especially lower class and stuff mm -hmm, like that. I'm but, sure that happened. Yeah. Or if you didn't contribute something to their society or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's just this kind of paints the Babylonians in a little bit of a different light. Yeah. And I'm not saying that going around kidnapping people is good. I'm absolutely not right. saying that at all. Yeah. But it is interesting how they went about strengthening their own kingdom while simultaneously cutting off surrounding kingdoms at the knees. Right. That's interesting to me. Yeah. Okay. So um, the tablets were composed by Babylonian astronomers known as Chaldeans, and these tablets recorded major historical events. Okay. Likely drawing from even more detailed astronomical diaries. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute. All right. Okay. So hold that note because yep. I was like, there at d diaries about astronomy. I'm sorry. Hello, what? Right. And there were some. Okay. okay. All right. So the tablets were uncovered, the, the ones that we're talking about, the Babylonian ones. Yeah. They were uncovered during 19th century excavations in Babylon, so the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they were left undeciphered in the archives for literal decades. 
they found them and then just put them in a museum and were like, someday, I guess, what else? Well, I mean, that happens to a lot of uh, archaeological finds. They don't know what to do with them, so they, they catalog seems, them until somebody does come along and actually... This seems really cool. What is it? I have no idea. Right. Well, I mean, you got to think. Somebody's got to go through all these mm -hmm. things that people find, and so who does that? And it's got to be an expert. Right. So how many experts are there in the world about, you know, I don't know. We should to go to tablets. Babylon and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's where they all are. Right. So the first chronicle to be published ever was in 1887. Okay. So... Finally, the same decade that they found them, somebody came along and was like, sure. hey, I got this. And then um, came the next one, which was about the fall of Nin. It's called the Fall of Nineveh Chronicle. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. and that one came out in 1923. Got it. So, now we're into the 1900s. Right. That these are finally Getting coming. published. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think all but three, the source that I was reading said, mm -hmm. um, have been um, what's called prov given provenance, meaning we've been able to verify um, the date and history and all of that stuff. Got so it. all but three okay. of the 45 hmm. have been provenanced, which, d again, that's so cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So these tablets cover Babylonian history within the year 747 to 668 B.C., Okay. Okay. So yeah. that would have been right around the time frame that we're talking about. Sure. Um, they start with King Nebuchadnezzar, not Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Okay? Right. Nebuchadnezzar, who ruled Babylon from 747 to 734 BC. Okay. And they go all the way through to a period called the Parthian period or the Parthian Empire. Okay. And that was a major Iranian political and cultural power in ancient Iran from 247 B.C. to 224 A.D. Okay. So, this these tablets cover all the way into an A.D. period. Got it. That's amazing. I thought you said that they only covered to the... Okay, I misunderstood what you said at first, because you said something about the 700s to 600s. They cover... Okay, hold on. How did that work? These tablets cover Babylonian history... From King. Um, okay, so there's some history within the time period, 747 to 668 BC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when it starts. Okay, so Got it covers it. some history in that period. And then, um, and then, and then, then from there it goes all, all the way, way through. through. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood. It was a little confusing how you said that. So. Yeah, it, it, well, it was confusing. Yeah. Yes, it was confusing and I clarified it. Got it. So, anyway, who's this King guy, right? That all of a sudden, like, he came on board and started recording history sure okay king ne nebusar I, I pronounced it three different ways you now. did yeah sorry his reign saw the beginning of a new era characterized by the systematic maintenance of chronologically precise historical records hmm. he's the first guy that started being like let's record some history guys right what you say yeah his reign also marks the reform of the babylonian calendar Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh? All right. Which, again, you know, we've got um, astronomers. Yeah. Right? Right. And now we've got calendar reforms happening. Sure. Because astronomy helps us understand Calendars. the passage of time. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of how we mark the passage of time on a large scale. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, he his reign did history and the calendar, and they introduced regular calculated months. And they have some kind of 18-year cycle that they they started, which I would love to learn, like, what did that do? Detail, right. Right? Yeah. Like, it was just a larger period of time, like, how to discuss right. a certain time period. Yeah, yeah. And they even came up with the earliest forms of the Zodiac. Hmm. Which, so I were mean, these astronomers or astrologists? They were astronomers. A bit, a mix of both. Okay. okay. All right. For the time, they were astronomers because they were studying the night sky. Okay. And they were understanding that the stars move in certain patterns and that the, you know, certain things affect the planet sure. in such a way. And right? I guess ultimately Zodiac is to the, the recognition that there are different celestial beings, things in the sky at any given moment. Sure. So. Now, yes, they were also astronomers. Astrologers and that they assigned other meanings right. to those. Yeah. So that's why I say a bit of both. Sure. But, okay. but I mean, still, it's very impressive that they had that 
understanding back then. Right, right. So, yeah. um, so this gets us into the astronomical diaries. Okay. Because remember, I was like, wait, what the fuck is that? Right. So you can see how, like, this is related to what we're reading, but, like, way off. Yes, course. yes. It's definitely a rabbit hole. Right. But I couldn't not. It was so cool. Yeah. Okay. You look less than impressed. No, I, it, it's interesting. I just, you know. You're just like, but it doesn't have anything to do with <laughs> it's. It's about the history of the time. You right. Know? So there's a lot happening in Babylon at the time. And I just find that very interesting as relates to what we're reading. Sure. And that's the tie in I see. Okay. You know? All right. That, do, we, do we tie it in or, or is it, are we just going over this stuff? I'm just curious, you know. Not really. I mean, <laughs> no, the, the tie-in is that, so this stuff really was happening over there. Okay. And here's some other things that were happening over there. I was just checking there. in case somebody was waiting for the tie-in. I just oh, want to make no, sure. Oh, no, there isn't know. one. You could There's stop no now. There's no tie-in. Okay. You could stop it. listening right now. Okay. I mean, don't, because it's still interesting stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. No, it doesn't get back to, like, this is just all interesting. That's it. You went down a rabbit hole. I went down a rabbit and hole. You got lost in the rabbit hole. I didn't get lost. I know exactly where I am. Mm, okay. Okay. So the astronomical diaries. Yes. Okay. They are also on clay tablets. Okay. And they, but they weren't just about stargazing. Okay. okay. So astronomy, astrology, whatever. They weren't just about looking at the stars. Got it. They tracked political happenings. They made predictions based on those observations and they recorded everyday details like weather and grain prices. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it was like a newspaper almost. Right, right. Right? Like, that's so cool. Yeah. And today, all of these records are housed in the British Museum. Huh. Okay. So, uh, we could literally go see these tablets. Right. You know what I mean? That's yeah. so cool to me. Yeah. So, um, going back to that king guy, uh -huh. whose name I've pronounced three different ways now and is not Nebuchadnezzar. Right. The original king that started all this yes. tracking stuff. Yes. Yes. He gathered the records of his predecessors, all of them, and he destroyed them. Oh. Thus ensuring that the history of the Chaldean kings began with him. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, the, yeah. Right? History is written by the... the by the winners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to kind of put in a time place of where he was, mm -hmm. one of his contemporaries uh, was the Assyrian king... Tigloth Pilisar, which we talked about earlier. Okay. I think he's one of those Sargon guys. Okay. Okay. Um, he actually became a vassal under Tigloth Pilisar. So, Got it. Yeah. Okay. At one point. So, All right. Anyway, now you know that there are clay tablets that talk about the Babylonian problems that we were seeing hinted at yeah. in the Bible. There's your tie-in. But what problems were they? Um, they were political. They were stretched too thin. They were. Got it. Um, there was unrest. They, okay. they had probably picked up a little more than they could handle. And, right. um, you know, that's why all of those little nations were gathered together to be like, now's our time. Let's strike by the fire's hot. Got it. You know, there's a crack in the structure. Let's get them. Got it. Got it. And Jeremiah was like, you're not though. Right. Right. They're good. Like, you're, don't be foolish. Right. You think you know a thing and you don't. Yeah. So, that was my little rabbit hole. Okay. And. Well, I don't know that we can actually call that a Q&A for 26 through 30, but it is our Q&A through for 26 through 30. <laughs> so, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the rabbit hole there. And. Um, well, we did answer one question. Did we? Yeah. Were there um, false prophets amongst those who were exiled to Babylon? There you go. The answer is yes. Okay. Were they really writing letters? Yes. Yes, they were. We answered two questions. We answered two questions. All so right. there you go. Okay, fair enough. All right. Well, that was our Q&A for today. Sure as fuck was. And we will be back tomorrow on Sunday with... Sacrilegious Book Club. And then I will get the weekly wrap out wrap up. I can never say that right. Like, you said ever. It, you said it once a couple weeks Did ago. Did I? I was, yeah. was I impressed with myself? No, you didn't even notice. Oh, I think, really? Wow. I think it's because you didn't overthink it, but huh. I noticed it because I love you. Got it. So, yeah, we'll get the weekly wrap up out, and then we'll be back on Monday with... Isaiah chapter 30. No, no, no. Jeremiah <laughs> chapter 31. Look, you fucked me up. All right, guys. We'll see you then. Bye.
Hey wife, I guess that's the end? But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.